purihin ang Diyos sa lahat ng panahon. Purihin ang Diyos sa lahat ng pagkakataan. The Apostle of Grace and chosen instrument to carry Jesus' name before the Gentiles says in 2 Corinthians 12.9 But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Sabi ni Paul, sapat ang kagandahang loob ng Diyos sapagkat lubos ang nahahayag ang kanyang kapangyarihan sa ating mga kahinaan. Ang kahinaan ng tao ay pagpapakilala sa kalakasan at kagandahang loob ng Diyos. As our team for tonight, God's love, does God condemns LGBT? We will be dealing to a very sensitive topic, but seems so normal. Normal kasi minsan sila na yung announcer sa newscast, tsaka sa mga kung ano ng mga bagay. Normal kasi pagka nakikita na natin parang okay na lang as the world promotes. What the Bible says about this acts? If God is love, does He condemn people who is just trying to love others? Is the grace of God enough to overcome homosexuality? That entitles our study the unmerited favor. Let us pray. Father in heaven, muli Panginoon, nagpapasako po pa kami sa inyo. We are here before you, Father, acknowledging our weaknesses. But you have said that your grace is sufficient. Patuloy kami, Panginoon, muli sa inyo ng kalimisan, pagtuturo. Gamitin nyo lamang po, Panginoon, ang inyong pagbabalikod. Gawin kong tungan kayo ang mataas kayo ang patuloy na marinig. Use me, Father, as your vessel, and may your word be declared this moment with power. May your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Grace and peace be upon to you all. From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Nung ginagawa nila ito, sabi nila LGBT. Parang ang hirap. But we all know that's what LGBT is all about. It's about lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender. The main idea of this discussion is the unmerited favor of God that teaches that give hope, that leads to finished work of Christ. Makikita natin dito, as we go along, yung pag-aaral na ano ba ang itinuturo maaari ng unmerited favor na ito. Ginamit ko siyang unmerited favor instead of grace kasi napakarami ng grace eh. Pagka narinig ko yung isang church, sabi niya, say by grace. During that time, nagtanong ako, sino si grace? Di ba dapat si Jesus? But anyway, pagka binigyan naman natin ng saved by mercy, parang may pangalan na rin mercy, gamitin na lang natin ito, unmerited favor. Ano nga ba yung masasabi natin dito sa pinagsasabi natin LGBT? Okay lang ba? Normal na ba? Kasi meron ng mga civil laws na nag okay sa same-sex marriage. But is this all about? Let us make a foundation. Sabi sa Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, so God created human being in His own image. In the image of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. Hindi sinabi dyan bisexual and homosexual or whatsoever, He created them. Male and female, He created them. This is really a good foundation. This has been the stand even during the creation stage in Genesis. But let us study further and look into details, into different angles, as we detail one of Paul's pastoral letter. Mag-uusapan natin sa sulat ni Paul dito kay Titus. 
actually, uh, itong sulat na ito was addressed to him that he had to teach. The book of Titus is all about sound doctrine. The purpose of it is magkaroon ka Titus ng magandang pagtuturo. A firm foundation, a good doctrine that will teach that you will teach to the church. Yun yung purpose ni, 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 ni Paul on writing to Titus. Okay? Let us start. In Titus chapter 2, 11 to 14, sabi dito, pwede ba sabay-sabay tayo? 1, 2, 3. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldliness, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God, Savior Jesus Christ. Okay. Ito ay verse 11 to 14 na. Ang pamagat natin, the unmerited favor. Ngayon, pag tinignan muna natin yung previous verses prior to 11 to 14, Makikita natin dito from verses 1 to 10, sinasabi dito yung tinatawag natin Christian behavior. Dapat, magkaroon tayo ng behavior na ganito. Pag binasa nyo yan, bago siguro pagkatapos natin ito, basahin nyo yung 1 to 10 verses. Sinasabi diyan, ina-address yung teaching na yan para sa old and young men, old and young women, tapos mga slaves, which equivalent probably yung, yung mga empleyado ngayon. So sabi diyan, to be temperate, kayo dapat ay maging mahinahon. Dapat kayo ay worthy of respect. Sinasabi doon sa verses 1 to 10. Isinabi na ni Paul yan, dapat meron kayong uh, magan sound speech. Dapat pinipilin yung mga lengguahe ninyo. Tapos dapat daw, hindi ka chismosa. Dapat daw, uh, hindi ka Adik. <laughs> dapat hindi ka daw adik sa wine. Para ganyan. Tapos dapat yung, 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 yung ikaw bilang isang asawa, dapat daw mahalin mo yung mga husband mo. Gayun na rin yung mga children. And then to be subject to your husband. So tinuturo yan. Dapat papasakot tayo sa mga lalaki. Yun yung katuruan doon verses 1 to 10. Hindi ako nagsabi niyan ha? Si Paul. Okay? Tapos, sinasabi din dito that to be subject to your masters in everything. And this is for the employees, okay? Paul, dito sa verses 1 to 10, Christian behavior, this is the duty of the Christian. Ito dapat ginagawa natin. Eh. Pero nung tumalun siya dito sa verses 11 to 14, Paul insisted itong transformation of life. Ang ganda-gandang sumulat ni Paul kasi pagka yan nagbigay ng letter, ibinibigay niya, ilalakan niya, ito yung Christian behavior. And then, dun sa next paragraph, sasabihin niya, dito yung transformation of life. Okay? So, dito naman, Paul shifted from duty to doctrine. Ito na ngayon yung doctrine na pag-uusapan natin. Principal, principle of unmerited favor. Titus was given this letter. Okay? Let us start. Sabi dito sa verse 11, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Pag sinabi yan, pag tinignan nyo yung for, ibig sabihin may karuntong yan. Ito yung 1 to 10. Sapagkat ang biyaya o kagandahang loob ng Diyos, sinasabing ganyan, ay nagdudulot ng kaligtasan na nakita at natunghayan ng lahat ng tao. Ngayon, pag tinignan natin yung grace na yan, bigyan na rin natin ng, tada- ng daan. Ang grace, paano yung grace? Ito sa Greek word, is, alam naman natin, this is charis. Okay? Tapos, pag tinignan natin sa secular uh, definition, this is, uh, what do you call this? This is blessing. This is kindness. An act. Tapos, ito ay favor. Grace is a favor. Tapos, tinignan ko siya, ano kaya yung favor? Kaya, ginawa ko, unmerited favor. Eh. Ang sabi dyan sa pag-favor, kapag sinabi mong favor, this is an act of kindness beyond usual. Okay? So, unmerited favor. Ito yung binibigay ng Panginoon sa atin. Ano ibig sabihin ng favor? An act of kindness beyond usual. Halimbawa, may nauuhaw na tako. Binig- kailangan, ang usual sa atin, bibigyan natin ng water. Di ba? Dati yung usual eh. Pagka favor, kapag may nauuhaw na tako, bibigyan mo ng water, water, peeling station. Di ba? Ganon yung grace. Ganon yung favor. May nauuhaw na tao, water. Pero pag 
before, bibigyan mo ng water filling station. Yun yung tinatawag natin act of kindness beyond usual. Okay? Alam din naman natin yung mercy and grace. Ang mercy is nagkaroon ka ng kasalanan tapos ina-absuelto ka, ah, naawa ako sa iyo, hindi na kita paparusahan. Because you deserve punishment, that is mercy. Okay? Pero hindi na kita paparusahan. That is mercy. Pero yung grace, hindi mo deserving yun, pero pinagkakatiwala pa rin sa iyo, ibinibigay pa rin sa iyo. Alam naman po, malinaw yan. I just wanted to, 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 to have a foundation before we go to the other topics. Okay? So, kung titignan din natin ito, this is what we call the unmerited favor, which is our title. Okay? Ano nga ba, at saan nga ba, noon pa man, makikita natin yung karakter ng Panginoon, that He is really gracious in everything. Napakabait at napakabuti ng Panginoon at hindi yun magbabago. Mula nung nangyari yung kasalanan ni Eva at Adan, doon pa lang sa, sa Garden of Eden, nakita na natin at nasaksihan na natin ang biyaya ng Diyos. Hindi nyo po pala isip nung nagkasala si Eva at Adan, pwede naman yung patayin niya kagad yun eh. Ah, you are not holy, palitan! Gawa na lang ulit ako. Diba? Pero in-extend ng Diyos yung kanyang favor, yung kanyang unmerited favor to these great-great-grandparents of ours. Nakuha nyo? At ipinakita yun sa Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. The Lord God made clothes out of the animal skin for Adam and his wife, and He clothed them. Nakita nyo yun? Kailangan merong bloodshed na matanggal para ibigay lamang sa taong nagkasala na yun. They don't deserve it. Nakukuha nyo yung grace, yung unmerited favor. Hindi nila din deserve yun kasi nagkasala ka eh. Kailangan sa yung mamatay. But what, what that the Lord did, He killed an animal. At hindi lang yun. Kinuha pa yung skin para ibigay sa kanila para hindi sila ginawin. Because of the distortion of the creation. Let's go back. Sabi niya sa Tati 2.11, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Ano ba yung tinatawag natin grace of God? Gaano ba ka-intensity sa inyo yung salitang grace of God? Ano ba yung impact ninyo sa buhay ninyo? Tingnan yung mabuti, for the grace of God. Grace of God plus sincerity, hindi yung taba. Grace of God plus works, hindi. Basta grace of God. Unmerited favor. Grace of God is the unmerited favor that brought us salvation. Alam niyo po, yung grace nasa Panginoon na yung unang-una pa rin. Pero sabi niya, it has appeared to all men. So when Jesus Christ came, na-validate yung, yung visible grace of God na yan. Na-validate. Grace of God, ito dapat yung nagiging motivation natin sa ating pamumuhay bilang isang kristyana. Grace of God is the greatest motivation of Christian living. Dapat naiisip niyo yung kapag ito nagkaralo na, nagiging successful ka, it is only by the grace of God. Halimbawa, ang galing-galing mo sa ministry, ang daming, oy, nabibless ako sa iyo, ayan, galing mo, ayan! No! It's about God. Nagkakaroon ka ng mga diploma, mga achievements sa buhay dahil sa biyaya lang ng Diyos, hindi ka deserving yan. You stand on the grace of God. At kung may iisip nyo yun, ito yung magiging motivation natin in our Christian living. Na may iisip lang natin na kaya pala ako nagkaroon ng ganito para itulong ko sa mga nangangailangan. Ah, kaya pala ako nagkaroon ng ganito para, para magamit for the glory of God. This should be our motivation in our Christian living. Grace pleases God. We cannot fully appreciate Christian life until we understand God's grace. Dapat maintindihan niya atin yun. Kaya tingnan nito si Pablo. Si Pablo, napakadaming achievement. Ito yung tinatawag nating pastor of all pastors. Because he is above all pastors, probably. Pero ito yung sinabi niya sa 1 Corinthians 15.10. But the grace of God, I am what I am. Kung hindi dahil sa biyaya ng Panginoon, hindi ako magiging apostle, sabi niya. And his grace toward me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Ano ibig niya sabihin than they all? Than Peter, than the other apostles. Parang ayabang ni Pablo dyan, you know? 
Dinain ko sila. Mas marami akong pagbabagal sa Panginoon. Pero pag tinignan mo yan, kasi hindi naman yung tuldok, eh, kama lang. Yet not I, but the grace of God that which was with me. Nakuha niyo yung, yung pagiging humil, humil, na humble ni, no, ni Pablo. How he humbled himself before the Lord. Kasi ito yun yung motivation niya in Christian living, yung grace of God. Then we go to our outline. Yung tatlong outline na ito, i-co-connect natin yung tinanong natin kanina. Okay. Sa first vlog, sabi dyan, the grace na tayo, ah, yung unmerited favor, <laughs> teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. Ang dami niyan sinabi dito. Actually, grace or unmerited favor <coughs> teaches. Natuturo yan. Di ba? Yung dami sinasabi natin pattern for our Christian living. The no teachings. Ito yung mga tinuturo niya. The no teachings. Tingnan ulit natin yung verse. Sabi niya, teaching us that denying ang godliness and worldly last. Ito yung mga dapat hindi natin ginagawa. Ito yung tinuturo ng biyaya at kagandahan ng loob. Ang godliness, alam nyo naman niya, ang godliness, laging kaaway ang Panginoon, kasamaan. Dahil galit ang Diyos sa kasalanan. Sabi diyan, teachings us and denying ungodliness. Sabi ko diyan kangina, unmerited favor teaches. Natuturo siya. Pero hindi niya sinasabi, teaching is is different from commanding. It's still up to you to follow or not. Kasi doktrina ito eh. Ito yung pagtuturo na, ito yung gawin mo. Ngayon, it's up to you kung susundin mo. But it's really good thing to follow what is written there. Na wag mong gagalwin itong pagiging ang godly. Sumunod yan, eto dito natin ito kukuhanin yung kaninang worldly last. Itong worldly last relates to Satan cosmic system of belief. Relates to Satan's cosmic system of belief. Any belief that opposes God, ito yung worldly last. Kapag sinasabi ng mundo na okay lang ito, pero opposite naman sa sinasabi ng Diyos, gawa-gawa ito ng kalaban ng Diyos. This is Satan cosmic system of belief. Ang mundo, talagang hindi para sa atin. At iba naman talaga yung namamahala dito. Because we are under curse. The, during the, the sin. Kaya ang sabi dito, kung sino yung kalaban natin, is, sabi ni John sa 1 John 2, 15 to 16, Do not love the world. Wag or the things in the world. Malinaw. If anyone loves the world, and the love of the Father is not in him. Nakuha niyo instruction na For all that is in the world, lash of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Sabi siya pa sa inyo kanina yung last na yon, yung worldly last na yon. It's the cause, Satan's cosmic system of belief. Pinapaniwala ka na tama lang yon. Sabi ng mundo, okay lang yan. Kaya nagkakaroon sila ng mga community ngayon. Na parang nagiging okay na rin to. Ah, nag-okay sa kabilang bansa, eh, okay na rin natin dito. So, but that is not for God. That is for the world. And anything that anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Madaling tandaan. Kami na natin na natin yung unmerited favor that teaches. Ito yung una. Sabi natin, no teachings. Let's go now to that yes teachings. Ano naman yung sinasabi niya about yes teachings? Sabi dito, teaching us that we should live soberly. We should live righteously. We should live godly. Kapag sinabi natin soberly, mahinahon. Ito yung mga tao under in control. Sabi ko, palagi kami may, may, may kakilala lang isang Pakistan siya. 
Lagi niyang tinatanong, Hey, Oliver, everything is under control? Ganun siya magtanong. Kapag, uh, di ba, diba, tayo, how are you? Ganyan. Siya sabi niya sa akin lagi, Hey, everybody, uh, is everything under control? So siguro sinasabi niya sa pagkatao, this is what you call, yung tapat uh, sober ka, uh, may katinuan. Yung matinu, yung pag-iisip mo, hindi ka lasing. Yan, hindi ka lamo. Di ba? So yan yung tinatawag natin soberly. Soberly. Has control over any issue. Tapos isa bang teachings dyan, yan yung to live soberly. Tapos yung isa pang teaching dyan is to live righteously. Actually, yung soberly is for your own. Three areas yung tinarget dito. Yung soberly is for your own. To live righteously is for others. Dapat meron, man, manumuhay ka ng makatwiran. Manumuhay ka ng matuwid. This is to benefit all the others. Nakuha niya. When you talk about righteously, you live with integrity toward others. Okay? Dapat worthy of respect. Yan. Tapos, yung pangatlo, to, the last teachings is to live godly. Ito naman para sa Diyos. Mamuhay ka na makadiyos. Ang isang part ng pagiging makadiyos is to live in devotion and reverence toward God. Ganon talaga dapat tayo mamumuhay. To live godly. Para sa iyo, para sa kapwa, para sa Diyos. Yan na yung unang point natin. The unmerited favor it teaches. Let's go to the next The unmerited favor give hopes. Nakita ko yung aking mentor. Pero mentor, gamitin ko na po ito. Sabi dito sa verse 13, Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Ito na yung verse 13. So isang verse na lang pala tayo. Sabi dito, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Somebody might react about abusing this verse. Kasi ito daw, pangako lang ito sa mga exiles of Israelites. May mga naniniwala naman that the believers are the new Israelites. Kapag nakukuha po kayo ng mga verses, sasabi nila, ay, oh, out of context naman ito eh. Tignan nyo yung universal truth of that verse. Ang pangako ng Panginoon sa iyo ay papagyamanin ka at hindi ka saktan. Totoo naman yun eh. Tiba? Kahit sa anong time frame niya nilagay, totoo yung sinasabi na yan that ang Panginoon hindi nananakit. Nagbibigay siya ng magandang pag-asa sa'yo. Dapat naiisip natin yun, yung kagandahan ng pag-asa. Ano ba yung definition? Ano ba yung secular definition ng hope? Kasi dito sa, sa, sa Google, Want something to happen. Gusto mo nangyari yung isang bagay. Hope is a feeling of expectation. So, ito ay isang feeling. Feeling ko na sana mangyari. I hope it will not rain later. Di ba parang ganun? I hope I have a cell phone. Di ba ganun? You are hoping, you are expecting something. That is a feeling of trust. I hope he will not leave me. A feeling of trust. Pero hindi tayo dapat nakapunta doon sa mundo eh. Di ba sabi natin, hindi dapat tayo sa mundo, dapat nakatingin tayo sa Diyos. Ano ba tinatawag natin biblical hope? Ano ba yung biblical hope? Ano ba sinasabi ng Biblia regarding sa hope? When we talk about biblical hope, it is assurance based upon a sure foundation. And who is our foundation? Di ba sure na sure yun? Hindi na bibiro ang Panginoong Yesus kapag sinabing malaya ka na, malaya ka na kapatid. The biblical hope is a reality and not a feeling. Hindi ito nararamdaman ko lang. Na I hope it will not rain. Pag sinabi ng Panginoon, that is a reality. Katotohan ang mangyayari na kailangan lang natin tignan. Patuloy natin tignan. Dahil sure na mangyayari yon. A biblical hope is certain and not carries any doubt. Ganon. Ganon kasigurado ang pangako ng Panginoon. Nakita niyo yung sinabi ni Peter sa 1 Peter 3.15? Ang sabi niyan, But in your hearts, honor Christ, the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks for you, for, for a reason, for the hope that is in you. 
yet you do it with gentleness and respect. So probably the context here is about, but I want to, to emphasize the hope that is in you. Pag sinabi ba yung in you, matatanggal pa yun, nasa sa yun eh. At ang pag-asa na yun nagmumula sa Panginoong Yesus. Kaya na tayo namimig na, naninigurado na ipinagmamalaki that we will not lose any salvation. We will not lose our salvation. Because our hope is in God. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. Alam niyo po, meron isang kwento. May isang babae na nag-church. Tapos, nabalitaan ng isang pastor, ng pastor of the church, that this girl is had a dream. Na nakausap niya daw si Jesus Christ. Tapos, ang sabi nitong babae, in ininvestigahan ng pastor, baka lang hindi naligo itong batang ito, o itong babae ito, tinignan niya ng mga diagnostic question, and it seems okay. Okay naman yung babae. But before they end up, ang sabi ng pastor sa kanya, kapag ka nakita mo nga ulit sa panagilip si Jesus Christ, can you ask him kung ano yung greatest sin I have committed? Sabi ng pastor, ipakitanong mo nga sa, sa kay Jesus Christ pag nakita kayo, ano ba yung pinakamabigyan makasalanan ng gagawa ko sa buong buhay ko? Okay. Lumipas ang mga araw, nabalitaan niya ulit na nga, na naginip itong babaeng ito, pinatawag niya ulit sa office. Tinignan niya ulit ng diagnostic question, baka hindi na naman naligo. Baka nagkakaroon lang ng hallucination ba tawag na? Tinignan naman na, then it's okay naman. And then to the last, yung kanilang pag-uusap, at it end up, na sinabi ng pastor, natatandaan mo yung unang meetings natin. Yung, yung pinapatanong ko sa inyo, kung ano yung, yung, yung greatest sin that I have committed. Oh yes, pastor. Natandaan ko po siya. So, anong sagot ni Jesus Christ? Ah, nung tinanong ko po si Jesus Christ, ang sagot niya, I remember nothing. Nakita niyo yung pag-asa na yan. Ang sabi dito ni Jeremiah 34, 31 verse 34, I will forgive their wickedness and I will never again remember their sins. Ganun ang kapatawaran na tatanggap natin sa Panginoon kapag tayo humihingi ng tawad sa Kanya. Kinakalimutan niya na yung mga nakaraan. Diba na makaganda ang pag-asa nun? At tayo kung tayo lumala, lumalakad bilang isang Kristiyano, what do we need to know? What do we have to, 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 to look for? That we are the citizens, we are citizens of heaven. But our citizenship is in heaven. Ang ganda ang pag-asa. Dapat nakikita natin yan. Dapat nararamdaman na yan natin. And then we go to the third point. As I told you, three points na. That narrated favor finishes. Tinuturoan tayo, binibigyan tayo ng pag-asa. At siya na rin ang tumatapos. Titus verse 14, the last verse. Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deeds. Na lahat ng mga kasamaan. And purify himself, his own special people, Silus, for good works. Sabi dyan, who gave himself? Who is who? Who is who? Who is who? Si Jesus Christ himself. Jesus went to the cross deliberately of, of his own will. The substitutionary death of Christ for our sins. This is what we call complete unmerited favor. Biyaya na tinapos na ng Panginoon sa krus. We don't deserve to go in heaven. Pero dahil sa ginawang substitution, pagiging substitute ni Jesus Christ sa kasalanan natin, tayo nagkaroon ng kalayaan. Tayo nagkaroon ng kaligtasan. We don't deserve this unmerited favor. Tapos sinabi dyan, Jesus' death redeem us from lawless deeds sa lahat ng kasamaan. Tinagtagumpayo na ng pamatayan ng Panginoon ang lahat ng kasamaan na aaring nating magawa. Simple acts. Homosexuality. Tulad ng banggit ko kanina. At isa pa is to purify us. Ang sabi diyan, 
lawless deeds and purify for himself to do good works. Saved by unmerited favor means we're genuinely saved and not just theoretically saved. Salvation is not just an abstract action of the heavenly court. It is a life-changing transformation. That is why the unmerited favor doctrines leads inevitably to, to a godly life. Dapat kapag naiisip natin na yung mga bagay na yun, naging kita yung mabuti. Dapat pag naiisip natin yung hindi tayo yung mayabang, dapat talo tayong nagiging humble. Dahil hindi tayo talaga makakatayo before God. It's only by grace. It's only the unmerited favor of God. Now, kanina, nabang ito sa inyo, that we will go back to LGBT issues. The hom- homosexualities and all this. Same-sex marriage and all this. Balikan natin yan. But before that, we, we should watch a video. Sister Nicole, can you play that? Pagsikahan muna tayo! Isang pagbabago na ginawa ng grasya ng Panginoon. A former Super Reina winner, the leaps as a man, God changed me. Ikinagulat na kinuwa-tuwa ng mga lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community ang pag-anunsyo sa Super Serena Queen of Flowers. Winner na si Sabel Gonzalez na siya sa babalik loob sa kapagiging lalaki. Si Sabel ay kilala sa gay community bilang Julia Barreto. At ito rin ang screen name na gamit niya na sumali siya sa tinyag na pakonte sa home. Yung time show na ikulaga. Ang Super Serena Queen at Flowers ng 2014. Ang Super Serena and Beauty Contest para sa gays at trans women. Si Sabel din ay matawan sa Pilipinas sa Visit Karyakyo at Pink 2017 sa Pagkaya Kairan. Pagkatapos niya, sa top 10, ngunit, ang pagkumay na corona ay transgender candidate mula sa host country. Back to Mark, kasabay na magpatalik na bilang isang lalaki ang paggamit ng kanyang mga tunay na pangalan, Mark Stephen. Sa kanyang Facebook account ko, Mark Tess, January 23, sinabi ni Mark na naghanap niya ang totoong kaligayahan sa buhay na magiging pagdabal. Pagkita ng pagbalik loob sa buong kaligabal. Isahin ni Mark sa 2018, I found the true happiness in our Lord Jesus Christ. Only God can change to you and to me. So accept and follow Jesus as your Savior and Lord. Repent from your sin. This is the only way, the truth and the life, and to be with the Father in heaven. Kung sa man ang suporta ng kusini ko, komento mo na sa kanyang friends at mga followers on Facebook. Sa ito ni Mark sa kanila, thanks for you for the support and only God can change us. God is transforming us for His feelings in my life. I know I was good for a man and God changed me. I realized that I think na dapat natin makita. Nakuha niyo po yung unmerited favor. Hindi trabaho yan ni Mark. But ito ay trabaho ng pagbibigay ng kagandahang loob ng Diyos. The unmerited favor doctrines leads inevitably to a godly life. Isang bagay na dapat natin maintindihan. Pero ano ba yung standard church natin? Let's Let's, let's tackle four questions. Ang sabi dito, if God is love, does He condemns people who is just trying to love others? Kung God is love, anong, ikinukondem niya rin ba yung mga taong gusto lang naman magmahal? Pero dapat tinawin natin ito. Ano bang pagmamahal yung sinasabi niya? Kasi magkaiba yung, I love my bike, I love my food, I love my friend, I love you babe. <laughs> Tsaka, I love you, God. Alam naman natin na if it, if it is erotic, which is for physical desire, if it is bileo, for companionship, or if it is agape. Dapat nakikita natin yun. Ngayon, titignan din natin. If God is love, does He condemns? Who is just trying to love? Nasa sa inyo po yan. Hindi ko nasasagutin, kayo naman ang mag-isip. Second question. What about the idea that there are homosexual animals? Alam niyo po itong mga community na ito, pinipilit nilang i-fit i- 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 dito sa 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 
kadila katwiran, itong mga ganitong bagay. Pag titingnan niyo po, along the, according to the study, may tinatawag tayong alpha male. Itong alpha male na ito, makikita natin parang inaharas niya yung mga female, tsaka yung mga male. This is actually a bisexual. Pero titingnan niyo po yung theory, yung creation na yun, yung mga insect na yun, yung mga animals na yun. Kaya lang yung ginagawa yung mga bagay na yun. This is not about pleasure, but this is about dominance and power. Tandaan niyo yan. This is about dominance and power. Men and women were made in God's image, not animals. Kaya madaling ikumpara. We cannot use animal behavior as, it, as a basic of morality to justify our reasonings or chosen actions. Hindi natin pwedeng gamitin basihan yun because animals have no morality. Kapag ka yung animals eat their youngs, meron mga ganun eh. Diba? Tapos kapag ka, tapos nilang mag-mate, yung mga insect, pinapatay nila yung kamate nila eh. Can we do the same? Hindi, di ba? Because they don't have morality. Kaya hindi natin pwede ikikumpara yan. Kaya yung mga katwira nila, parang, parang medyo tagi din. So kayo na po ang sumagat niya. The third question would be, what does the Bible say about homosexuality? Sinabi ko na po kanina, homosexuality is a sin. People become homosexual because of their sin. During the call of man, nasama yan. Pero ultimately, their decision. But ultimately, because of their own choice. Meron, tayo, meron kaming napag-usapan na ito dati na, na dahil daw sa X and Y chromosomes and X and Y, mga scientific, kaya daw nagiging, nagiging leaning siya sa, sa, bio, sa, sa, sa pagiging uh, homosexual. Pero ito naman yung tanong ko sa inyo. Kung iyan ay genetic, kung iyan ay namamana, so dapat namamana din yung violence. Dapat na namamana din yung pagiging hot-tempered. Dapat namamana din yung tinatawag natin ju- pagiging judgmental. Di ba? A person may be born with a greater susceptibility to homosexuality, just as some people are born with a tendency to violence, to easily anger, to judgmental, and other sins. Ngayon, ang tanong natin, is being a gay a sin? Is it a sin to be gay? Yung unang tanong, is it, is being a gay a sin? The answer is no. Is being a gay is a sin? No. But, it is a sin to be gay, yun yung kasalanan. Being is not a sin. Behaving is. Para may, tiwal, may iwasan natin yung pagiging judgmental sa mga taong nakapalilid sa atin o kaya may mga nakita tayo. Kasi minsan yung mga suicide rate, tinitignan ko, hindi pa ako natawag sa research na regarding dito sa mga suicide rate ng LGBT. Kaya usually, ginagawa nila ito pagka uh, tinatawag natin, um, what do you call this? Uh, dahil sila ay nabubuli, dahil magkakaganyan-ganyan. So yun yung mga ibang mga factors. But this one, I would like to, to, to impart to you. Para yung maiwasan natin yung ating mga pagiging, magiging judgmental, what do hunter, hunters do? What do hunters do? They hunt. What do golfers do? They go. What do fishers do? What do swimmers do? Okay, final. Ang gagaling nyo. What do sinners do? May mga kasalanan, talagang nandyan na yan. Hindi natin makukuha yun dahil hindi kapag hindi natin isinuko sa biyaya ng Diyos. Maaari yung istragan niya pagiging homosexual. Pero istragan mo naman pagiging lasinggero, pagiging mainitin ang ulit. It's the same thing. Huwag natin lintuhin ang ating sarili. The final question would be, what is the stand of the church regarding this issue? Biblically, homosexuality is a sin. Historically, mula kunang-unang panahon pa, mula pa ng Egypt, panahon pa ng Egypto, nung na-discover uh, nila kung ano-ano, kapag ka nag-aasawa yan, historically, dalawa, male and female. Pagka tinawag naman nga natin, psychologically, Pagka tinasabi natin, uh, ayon sa research, that, that emotionally and psychologically, male and female complement each other. Sila yung nagpupuna ng mga pagkukulang. Kasi may mga bagawag, may mga pangangailangan yung lalaki na hindi mapupunan niya sarili niya. Kailangan mapunan ito ng, lala, ng babae and vice versa. 
So yun, complementary according to psychology. Psychology. Gayun na naman sa by nature. In, in the law of procreation, hindi ba kapag create yung parehong lalaki? Di ba? So kung sinasabi natin, biblically, historically, psychologically, and nature, all argue for marriage is being a man and a woman, why there's a such a controversy today? Bakit kailangan pa natin pilit-pilitin pag-usapan ito? In conclusion, all sin is offensive to God. Homosexuality is just one of the many things that will keep a person from the kingdom of God. God's forgiveness is just as available to homosexual as it is available to adulterer, to idol worshiper, to murderer, to thief. God also promises strength for victory over sins, including homosexuality tulad nung naganap kay Mark Stephen kanina sa video. To all those who will believe in Jesus Christ for their salvation. The unmerited favor of God is enough to overcome homosexuality and other sins. And I will leave you with this. At ito yung dapat nating tandaan if we are struggling. That, 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 that the Lord says that my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. Amen. Let us all stand. Father, muli kami po ay nagpapasalamat sa inyo. Tunay nga pa kito man, meron po kami mga kahinaan. Sa amin pong natutunan, panuloy po namin, Panginoon, itinataas at patuloy na pinagkakatiwala sa inyo. May mga bagay po dito sa kapaligiran namin na parang hindi normal. Pero mga bagay po ito ng dulot ng kanilang sariling pamimili at dulot din ng kasalanan magmula nung una pa. Salamat Ama dahil hindi po kayo nagkukulang. Hayaan niyong maintindihan, patuloy namin mautumang maulawaan din yung mga taong nagkakaroon ng ganitong mga karamdaman, mga taong nagiging struggle nila itong mga ganitong mga bagay. Alam po namin na hindi po namin kakayari by our own. That's why we are submitting it to you, Father. Kaya na po ang patuloy na kumilos din sa congregation nito. Pagpapala, ang patuloy niyo igawal sa bawat isa, Panginoon. At patuloy nilang makita, ma maramdaman yung pag-ibig na ibinibigay mo sa adulterer at gayon na rin sa homosexual. Patuloy po sana kaming, Panginoon, maging uh, nakatingin at nakatukol lamang sa judgment na maaaring mo ibigay ninyo para sa amin. That we don't deserve anything, Father. We are just living in by your favor, Alo. Hayaan yung pagpapala pa rin ang patuloy nyo yung kilos sa buhay namin, patuloy kami makalangan tayo sa inyong kalooban. Ito po ang aming samod na langin. Believing that you hear, Father, ito is us, this humbly before the name of our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Healer, Jesus Christ. Amen.